Welcome to Alive in the Word, episode 14. And today we're going to be going through 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. And our title for this episode is called God is Love. And our leading teacher for today is J Dove. And a lot of you guys know J Dove. He's our mission pastor <laughs> here at First Baptist Church. Uh, 1 John chapter 7, verses, uh, chapter 4, verses 7 to, to 12. So get your Bible ready as we dive into God's Word. Amen. Nelson, good to be with you. Yes, sir. Been looking forward to, to sharing the, the, the uh, living room with you for, for this study. Amen. Um, and I guess, folks, we'll just, we'll just jump right in uh, and read the passage, and then we'll kind of back up as we, uh, as we do and has been customary for this study. We're just going verse by verse through each passage as we bring it to you. So uh, hopefully by now you've had time to open your, open your Bible. Uh, let's read chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Verse 9, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Amen. Simply titled Nelson, uh, God is love, and and uh, already in this in this particular passage, we've seen the uh, the word love repeated quite a few times, yeah. and on into to uh, the first part of chapter five, I saw um, in a commentary that, that we've used that that John uses that word agape, love, thirty times between wow. verses seven through chapter three of verse wow. uh, of chapter or verse three of chapter five. Um, I found it funny, and I know I know you had a couple of these that that you noticed uh, as well. But you know, it's it's important. I think when we think of the word love, that that uh, we know how Jesus felt about children. Mm. And and I saw where this group of professionals uh, did one of these. Uh, just hey, let's ask these kids a question and and get their answers. And so a group of four to eight year old kids were asked the question, "What does love mean?" <laughs> and uh, there were some that were pretty funny, you know, hilarious as you might imagine. But there are also there were some that were that were quite deep and meaningful, yeah. and and so I picked a couple. I thought maybe if you had one or two you wanted to share. Uh, as puppy, as dog lovers, this one this one resonated with me. That uh, the answer to to this question, what does love mean? Love is when your puppy licks your face even after you've left him alone all day. <laughs> we can certainly relate relate to that. That was a, a four year old little girl that that uh, they gave. That was her definition of of what does love mean. And another one that I thought was really cool. Um, love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. Wow. And that was a five-year-old little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you, did you have any, any that yeah, jumped I out? Had, yeah, I had one. The, the one I had is love is when you go to a restaurant and give the other person your fries, but you get none of theirs. That's love, man. That's real love. Of, of course, yours would have to do with food. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and as funny as that is, uh, as good as that is to get the perspective from a child, we know, and the reason we're here is, is what, what perspective matters most is God's yeah. um, and, and how he sees love and that he is love. So let's, with that, let's jump right in. Um, as you know, we've, we've been following a commentary, an excellent uh, accompanying study for, for, for this, uh, this Bible study. And, and um, I'm, just, I'm just using the, the, the outline they laid out. They laid out. Um, and the first thing is we, we really break down from chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. The first point of the outline that, that I'll throw out there is that, that love's origin is in God. And yeah. John makes that clear um, just right off the bat. Let us love one another for love is from God. And, and later in the passage, he says in, in chapter 8, he says, or verse 8, he says God is love. And that, mm. that's important for us to remember that, that love's origin is in God. And I don't think what John is saying that, that only believers, only Christians can love. Yeah. 
certainly people who, who aren't followers of Jesus have the capacity to love. But, but what, he's, what he's describing there is a certain kind of love, mm. God's kind of love, mm. which, is, which is born in something that we can't possibly fathom. And so when he, when he speaks to uh, whoever loves has been born of God and knows God, he's speaking to something. When I think of the great commandment, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's the love that is, lo is God's kind of love. That mm. When we love that way, when we love God that way, then we have the love that John's speaking Amen. of. Mm. Any thoughts on that that you... Yeah, uh, and Jay, I didn't tell you this off air, but <laughs> I had the opportunity to translate all of First John from Greek to English. So wow. that that um, that word when he says like God is love, just in Greek that 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 display more emphasis. Like he is saying there without God, without God, if you have love and you don't have God, you don't really have love because mm. God is love. Um, he's not saying like that love is God. No, he's like, God is love. If you have God, you have the essence of what love is, uh, the, the, the true love, and that's God. So, yeah, that just reminded me of my seminary days. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. I, I love what John Piper said, that, that love is from God the way heat is from fire uh, or the way light is from the sun. And, mm -hmm. and just simply what, what you're saying, that, that to understand and to show that kind of love is, is something that comes from being born mm. into God. And, and certainly what John's talking about is that rebirth, that new birth that we have through a relationship with Jesus Christ, mm. that direct connection to the Father and how that, again, that origin, that source, when we have that new birth, we are in God. God is in us. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes uh, the, the source of our love. Um, you know, verse, uh, verse 8 um, if we kind of look at verse seven as an affirmation, um, uh, sort of an affirming statement of you have, you have this love if you have God. Mm. Uh, John cautions is in chapter or in verse eight, sorry, that anyone who does not have love, if you do not have this kind of love, then, then it means you do not have God kind of yeah. to your, to your point studying the, the Greek, because again, God is love. Mm. Um, this kind of love that that uh, that is that we're born into God and, and that expresses this knowledge of God, you know, I, I think points to that relationship. Mm. When we're born into God, we have the capacity for that love, but it's by truly knowing God and the demonstration of that relationship, living and walking daily with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. That's how we we know, uh, really become to know God. Anything else you want to share on on uh, on those two verses? Yeah, I want to ask a question. Um, so the question is, what, especially in this time, um, I remember in a meeting, pastor said he's like, man, everyone seems angry right now mm. with everything that's going on. What if a person says, Jay, I know God, I have a relationship with God, but right now I I feel like I'm not as loving, or mm. I don't I don't have any love to give. Like, what do you say to somebody like that? Like, I know God, but I don't have any love to give. Yeah, I'm struggling. I, I, I think just for me personally, when I feel like I've reached a point where I don't have any overflow to give, it means maybe I'm not getting, I'm not soaking, I'm not spending that time in the Word, I'm not spending that time mm. truly connecting with, with God and with my Savior Jesus mm. that I need to, to to have that overflow to give. And I, I think that might be where I'd start with, with that person, with that struggle. Mm. They say, how's your, how's your personal time with the Lord? Do you, do you feel like you are soaking up from God's word? You're soaking up from your personal prayer time enough mm. that you have something to give. Mm. I think of the analogy of the sponge, you know, a sponge is most useful um, if you're trying to, to clean up a, a spill when it's dry, mm. uh, a sponge is most useful if you're if you're trying to uh, uh, to soak uh, when it's dry. But but to be useful again, you've got to squeeze it out. Amen. Um, and so I, I've always found that helpful for for uh, thinking through something like that. That's good. Mm. Um, well, let's look at the second. So if we if we consider love has its origin in God, that that's the source. Um, we see the next kind of the next point of the outline is love is seen in the atoning, the atoning death of Jesus. And if we look mm. at verses 
9 and 10. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us. So what John is saying is, is what, what's about to be said is, is, is the manifestation, how we know that, that, that the love of God is there. Um, you know, we think of talking the talk and walking the walk. This is where John moves it to walking the walk. God shows us. Mm. He doesn't just tell us about his love. He shows us his love in this, that he sent his only son mm. into the world that we might live through him. Um, I, you know, the, the, word, the word that's used there for only, and if you did your Greek, then you'll remember this, monoyenes. Is, is the Greek, and, and that translated means unique, one of a kind. Truly, Jesus was one of a kind. There yeah. was only one like Jesus, and, and that, um, that is the ultimate demonstration that we have for this kind of love is that God did this for us. Mm. Not because we loved Him first, mm. not because we deserved it, but mm. because of His love for us. Mm. Isn't, that, isn't that good news? Yeah, it is. It's, it is. It um... is. And just that that agape love, that own selfish love, mm -hmm. like we we sin against God. We did not deserve him to come and save us. Like we did not deserve that at all. He didn't have to do that at all. He he was self-sufficient. He didn't need it, needed us at all. But yet he was sacrificial. Like he he just came and just grabbed us in our sin. So love, it, true love, like you were saying, like. In God is an unselfish love. True love in God is a sacrificial love. And we see God put that to action through the cross by sending his only son to the cross. You yeah. Know? That's just, man, that's awesome. It is. And it you know, makes me think of, of uh, just a recent experience, Nelson, um, that you and I had. And, um, you know, our world is full of people who go through maybe some seasons uh, longer than others, but certainly the experience of kind of wondering, does anybody love me? Mm. Am I loved? Will I ever be loved? Mm. And, and we know as, as believers, we know the gospel answers that with an emphatic yes. Yeah. And, and the one who matters most, who loves us most, mm. is the creator of the universe, the one who created a way to save us. And I was just thinking back to last night when we were making a visit and, and got to meet a young lady, not even the, the, the one we were going to, yeah. to try to meet and to, to give a gift to for... Uh, kind of thanking her for visiting, but, but um, a sister uh, of hers who, as we started to talk more and, and offered to pray, you know, I think her response was, I've never been big on religion. Her understanding of Christianity was really that limited to a, a religion, mm. a, a moral list of do's and don'ts. Um, she really didn't have the understanding of faith of, of what the gospel means. And, and you had the opportunity to share that with her. Yeah, I did. Uh, man, it was awesome. Like, as we was coming back from talking to this girl, Jay said he noticed something in her, like her face. Because when we started to talk to her, she seems just like she have heard it all. Um, she seemed like she don't want to deal anything yeah. with religion. She's cool. But when I began to share the gospel with her, her whole face changed her whole mood changed. She's like, I've never heard it like that before. Mm. And just like showed her how much God loves us. And it's not a just about religion, but it's about a God who loves us so much that he is going to send his only son to pay the punishment of sin that we deserve so that we can have a life that we don't deserve. And that, and that day, when me and Jay and, and, and Emmy Nestor shared the gospel with her, like she accepted the Lord um, and, and, and she planned on coming to our church. Hopefully she does come. And it was just a blessing just to see the gospel transform somebody live right before our eyes. Amen. That was awesome. And just... Um you know, just kind of speaks to what, what John says here, that we might live. That's, mm. that's, the, that's what the gospel gives. It gives life. Mm. Um, I think counter to that is what John says next um, in verse 10. He, he says, in this is love. And he, he, he explains that, that um, it's not that we love God first, but that he first loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And that, that word propitiation certainly is, is, a, is a, a, a deep kind of a theological word, not one that we throw around every day, but, but the meaning, if you go back and look, uh, the meaning of that word speaks to something offered to God to, to prevent the wrath mm. uh, of him being poured out. Mm. And, and that's what God did uh, for us through Jesus Christ. And Daniel Aiken, who, who wrote this particular part of our study, says, um, 
when God sent his son uh, into the world, he, he said it was like God sending his son into enemy territory, into a mm. world full of sinners. And he sent him on a search and rescue mission. And I've always loved that because I think of the passage, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Mm. Um, he came looking for us when we weren't looking for him. Mm-hmm. And, and just as Romans uh, tells us that, that he did so, not because you know, we deserve it, mm. but, but again, because, just because of his deep, unconditional love for us, um, sent his son that we might die. Mm. And why? Um, because he alone was worthy, was the only one worthy to pay the penalty of our sins. I, I was struck by uh, a quote that John Stott, an author that he, uh, that he has from a book, says, thus God took his own loving initiative. When we think about the, the, the act of sending Jesus, God took his own loving initiative to appease his own righteous anger by bearing it his own self Mm. in his own son when he took our place Mm. and died for us. Mm. That's the the extent that God went to to show us his love. Mm. Anything you want to add on that? Yeah, another quote from John Stout. uh, He says that sin is putting man... In God's yeah. place, that is sin. But salvation is God placing Himself in man's place. That was really I really good. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have to use that too. Um, so let's go. Let's let's um, as we we get to the the third part of our outline. So we've we've talked about how love has its origin in sin. How that's that's explained to us in verses seven and eight. How love is seen. That demonstration uh, again, kind of the walking of the walk, uh, is seen in verses nine and ten seen through the atoning death of Jesus. Uh, And then then finally, John closes this passage, verses 11 and 12, by by saying that love is perfected in us when we love others. Mm. And and I love how how this passage wraps up, Nelson. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, Mm. and His love is perfected in us. Amen. this is not the easiest of times to love one another, yeah. whether you're talking about outside the, the, the church or even within the church. Um, but what God expects of us as followers of, of Jesus is, is to be the way people can see his mm-hmm. love mm-hmm. for them, especially those outside of the church. Yeah. And, and when, I, when I think of John chapter 17, the high priestly prayer, uh, Jesus's own prayer to the Father, to His heavenly Father, on behalf of us, mm. His disciples, <clears throat> He says, "This I made known to them, I made known to them Your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which You have loved me may be in them, and I in them." And I think He does something in verses eleven and twelve with. This, this kind of dynamic of if, then. Mm. If this is true, then this should happen. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly how, he, how he, he puts it in. in uh, if God so loved us, if he did all these things for us, and if you're a follower of Jesus, then you believe that he did. You know that he did. Then we ought to do this. We should be able to live out and, and, and uh, exemplify this demonstration of love mm. for one another. Amen. Um, the next if then in verse 12, if we love one another, then it's a way God can make himself known Mm. and seen. So Mm. even Moses, you know, the Bible talks about Moses seeing God, seeing a a vision, a revelation of God. He did not see God. Mm. And we know that, that, um, none of us could ever see God. His glory is too, too unfathomable for us to, to, to be able to do that and survive. Right. But the way that we as followers of Jesus mm. show God to others, make him seen, make him known, mm. is by understanding his love for us, uh, loving one another. And if we love one another, we show that God is in us mm. and, and make, him, make his, known, um, his love known to others. And that is, as John describes it, is God's ultimate goal. Amen. Is, and that's how it's perfected and how it's, it's completed mm. is the ultimate goal of his, his love being known, made mm. known to others. Mm. Um, Any way you want to... I was going to close with this unless you have another thought. I have a question for you. Yeah. You ready? What would Christian love look like 
if Christ's example was truly followed. And maybe we just think about that within the church. If the church is set apart to be the example, and I mean by the church, us, the, the believers, the people that make up the church. Mm-hmm. If we truly fo- followed that example, what could that look like in the world today? That would look, uh, that would be life changing. And I'm thinking of an example that happened in car care. Yeah. Um, this lady from a whole nother religion uh, came to car care and the way that she left was so different. And this is what she said. She said, uh, man, the kind of love that I'm experiencing here, I have never experienced this love before. And I think if the world, if all of the world says that, like I have never experienced this love before, oh, yeah. like Jesus said, shine your light so that they can glorify the Father, your Father in heaven. And here I'm hearing John saying, let your love known so that they can glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, you know what I mean? So they're saying the same thing. Share your light. Now share your love so that all together they can know your Father in heaven. Amen. And maybe that's a good way we can kind of wrap our prayer. Um, you know, the, the sad reality, Nelson, is that uh, there are a lot in the world who love better than we do as mm-hmm. Christians. Um, that shouldn't be the case because we have the source, uh, going back to that first point, the mm-hmm. origin of love is God. God Amen. is love. Mm-hmm. And, and if, if uh, we want to show the world that love, that set apart, unique uh, love, then we've got to do it better in the church. Amen. Uh, so... Let's close in prayer. Uh, thanks for, for spending this time. This thanks has been fun. Yeah, yeah, Enjoyed nice. it. Well, let's pray together. Would you pray with us as you watch? Heavenly Father, we, um, Lord, we're just thankful for the opportunity each week to open your word, uh, to hear um, uh, in this particular study the, the words of John, the insights of John. Lord, mm-hmm. as you revealed yourself to him, Lord, John often considered the uh, the apostle of love, um, just because of how how incredibly and, and beautifully he writes uh, of your love for us, mm. Lord. Um, I, I do just pray that that your church, um, Lord, the church that that Jesus uh, came into enemy territory to um, to set apart, the church he died for, Lord, that we would would truly carry that mantle uh, of what it means to to love one another because of, of how we understand uh, and, and appreciate, Lord, accept the love that you, that you have for us. Lord, not just the love we read about or talk about, but Lord, a love demonstrated through the sacrifice, the offering of your son, uh, Lord, to, uh, to pay a penalty none of us could ever pay, uh, the penalty and, and uh, right justification of our sins, mm. judgment of our sins. So Lord, we... Uh, we pray that, that it starts with us, that, that we, would, um, we would show uh, your kind of love for one another, that the world may see it, may want it for themselves, and, and Lord, that the gospel revealed to them would, uh, would create uh, a decision they can't possibly pass up, and a decision to, uh, to make Jesus Lord and Savior of their lives. Um, may it be so, Lord, uh, in accordance with your perfect will, as we ask in faith, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.